Hello everyone and welcome to our final first impression video of the summer 2022 anime season. Today we're talking about Black Summoner. This is an isekai and one that I have read the manga of, or at least caught up to where the manga is at since it is still an ongoing project. Uh, it is actually adapted from a light novel, so still a lot further ahead in both source material than the manga and the anime is probably going to go. Regardless, I enjoyed this manga, so I looked forward to it when it was getting an anime. So, what is it about? Well, it's about this guy named Kelvin, one you can see right here. He ends up in the other world with basically no memories of his past life. The only thing that he really has to go off of is a skill menu and this goddess's voice in his head who is talking to him. It sounds like what happened is the past Kelvin from the other world decided to give up his memories in exchange for more skill points so he could put them into what he wanted to do. As such, he put them into being an S-class summoner. Not only that, but he formed a like summoning contract with the goddess after like professing his love for her um, over and over while he was being reincarnated. And so she thought that was cute and was like, sure, I will uh, make a contract with you and be your summon. And so he can summon her, but he does not have enough mana to do so currently since he's a level one and he has like, I think he starts out with like 20 or 10 mana, something like that, something like really small. But uh, yeah, so he's got like a goddess that he can just summon. It's like a pocket goddess. When he gets stronger, he can just summon her, right? And so that's cool. But it's also because she wants to, you know, take a break from being a goddess for a while. And that's why she's uh, agreed to it so earnestly and whatnot. And insists that she is his fiance, and that he will, when he sees her, fall in love with her again and all this kind of stuff, right? So anyway, that's basically the basic premise. Now... He goes around the isekai world as a normal adventurer. You know how the trope goes. Guy gets isekai goes to the Adventurer's Guild, signs up, and very quickly rises through the ranks, right? At episode two, he's already gone from rank F to rank uh, F, D, right? D. I had to think for a second there. Uh, he's already up to rank D um, very quickly by doing quests and all this kind of stuff. And... In the beginning, he gets a, uh, a pet, not a pet slime, a summoned slime. He can summon a slime that he names Clotho. And uh, it's a cute little slime. And as he fights with it, it gets stronger. And though all, most of their fighting is not shown, uh, there's a lot that's left out in the beginning uh, between episode one and two, where he's going around doing level like E quests for the Adventurer's Guild. And Clotho levels up and ends up evolving into a like a quasi legendary, I think is what they explain it, like a almost a demon king esque existence called a uh, gluttony slime or something like that, and uh, becomes a badass. It's, it's great. And our boy also knows like green magic. Kelvin knows green magic. Which is stuff like, uh, it seems to be like he can make muddy puddles and like manipulate gravity and like do air cutter stuff like that, right? It's not too explained in the, the anime. And I've, it's been a while since I've read the manga to completely remember what exactly green magic fully encompasses. But uh, regardless, that's what he does. Not that he can't do other magic because, I mean, all he has to do is buy the skill points and put them into the stuff, right? Uh, regardless, it, it's a fun little adventure of our boy being a summoner, going around, finding new people to have be, uh, not people, like monsters and stuff, to, you know, summon, and just solving a bunch of problems as he, you know, tries to level up so he can finally summon this goddess, which uh, is, for the most part, the main focus of the story, uh, in the beginning, at least. He wants to level up so he can summon this goddess and, you know, see if his past self actually was on to something about loving her and whatnot, you know. It does 
in the second episode, get another like subplot going on. And I don't want to spoil much about that, but it involves uh, another summon he has, or who he will get, and whatnot. And that adds a whole lot of other stuff, because that second plot line, the one that's not just summoning the goddess, it takes a lot of time, and there's a lot of like things going on that goes into that particular plot point. But it's not just that one plot point. Like, it's uh, just a part of the overall overarching plot point, right? Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain without spoiling a bunch of stuff, but I liked it. Uh, the anime was, was pretty good. Uh, there is, in the second episode, uh, when he's fighting uh, like this boss monster kind of thing, there is some CG animation, and I gotta say it was not that bad. Like, you know how usually when people do CG, they make, like, the background normal and then make CG characters so, like, it just clashes? Well, at least to me, it seemed like they made a CG background and CG characters so everything fit together just nicely. It also helped that it was, like, done well and it, it made sense. And it wasn't like they did a bunch of, like, cuts from, oh, we're going to really quickly do, like, some action moves, and then we're going to cut to, you know, like the normal animation style again. Uh, they did do that. However, they did, like, transitions into it. So, like, they would do, like, an attack that took up the whole, um, like, screen, and then they would transition into the normal art style, and then they would have, like, a transition where, like, the camera position shifted, to have it go into the CG animation again, rather than just like weird cuts where it like doesn't make sense, right? Um, I thought it was okay. Now, will I continue to think it's okay throughout the story? I don't know. Um, this one fight was the only time that I had CG that I could tell so far, and it was okay. It was not bad, to say the least, okay? So I do approve of this particular use of CG. Whether or not they remain as good or as consistent throughout the rest of the story, if they do use more of it, which I'm assuming they're going to, given the nature of his second summon. Uh, well, I guess third summon, since the goddess counts as his first, and Clotho the slime is his second. But regardless, uh, if things go as they have been, it'll be a good anime. Yeah, I definitely like the story of it and the, the whole premise of being a summoner and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. And it's, uh, it's different from the other slime anime that we have, which uh, I think it's just called My Isekai Life, the other slime one is, right? I forget the name of the ones that are like really long. Uh, but the other was the one where he has like just a bunch of slimes and he's also a summoner, or a tamer, I guess, is what he is in the other show. Uh, this one's different because he only has one slime and his magic isn't like, oh, he can do any kind of magic, basically. Uh, this one, he's limited to certain magics, uh, namely green magic so far. Whether that changes in the future, I'm very kind of vague about, but it's not like he's a jack-of-all-trades kind of thing. He relies on his strong summons right now and his, you know, green magic, which basically limits movement of the enemy so his summons can take people out, right? And uh, he has, like, an air cutter move, which is like a, uh, an air blade sort of attack and whatnot currently as well. But... Yeah, I thought it was quite good. So check it out. Let me know what y'all think. Um, and we can kind of go from there. But since that's the end of the first impressions, I also wanted to get a couple other things in here and just kind of discuss them. First of all, at show Licorice Recoil, its third episode came out today. And let me just tell you, it's continuing to impress me with how cool the show is. Like, I'm really getting, like, Chisato... Like, just being an amazing character. And definitely get, like, siesta-level vibes from her. You know, from uh, Siesta from uh, The Detectives Already Dead. And I really liked Siesta's character in that show. Um, and seeing another one named Chisato is just so cool. I, I love, like, the kind of, like... They almost seem, like, far away in terms of, like, their... Uh, abilities of being human. Like, they're so far removed from, like, normal humanity. But like they're just normal humans being cool, you know, 
I, I love that kind of thing, right? Um, also, I don't usually do first impressions about um, second seasons and stuff, but I do want to mention a couple second seasons that I'm watching, uh, namely Shadow House second season, which if you heard my first reaction and my um, like summary of the first season of Shadow's House, you'll know that I went into it thinking, this is a weird show. Like, what am I even watching? And by the end, I was like, y'all, watch this show. It is amazing. And the first episode of the second season was a little bit slow. And it felt like it didn't have as much of the like suspense and like thriller stuff that the end of the first season had. But the second episode really went back into it and really pulled me back in. And it's going to be an amazing second season. I cannot wait. Uh, also, we have Overlord's fourth season. Um, and that one has just been good. Although I think it's only been one episode so far. No, we're on episode... Yeah, excuse me, we're on episode two of it. And uh, that one, it, it's been pretty great too. It's more of the same. You got uh, Ainz doing his thing. Albedo doing her thing. All the monsters, of course, praising... Ainz and his gloriousness while Ainz is just like, what the hell am I going to do with all these guys just like fawning over me? And like, how am I going to leave this new sorcerer kingdom kind of thing? It's, it's great. I love it. I cannot wait to see what they do. Um, I cannot wait to see like the wars and the fights that they're going to have in this season. Because like, how do you top the third season where they had massive armies and Ainz just summoned like a bunch of like monster horror things that stampeded across the battlefield and massacred everyone. Like, that's beautiful. That was amazing. I cannot wait to see what happens. Uh, but yeah, and then I think that's, that's pretty much everything I gotta say. Uh, I will mention I have decided to drop Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer right now. Uh, just because, I, I don't know, I watched the second or third episode and I just could not get into it. Like, it, it's, it's too bland for me. I just really didn't, yeah, it didn't click, you know? And uh, yeah, so I'm dropping that one. And will I drop any others? Who's to say? Um, the current contenders for me dropping them are, like I said, uh, uh, Buchigire, Prima Doll, and Vermeil and Gold, along with uh, Luminous Witches, which uh, of all of those so far, I don't know, Prima Doll just hasn't really pulled me in too much. So that one I also might drop. Luminous Witches, if it does get more idly, or like all they're doing is singing and stuff, and it's not like, there's like no action at all in it, I'll probably drop that one. I just don't like idle stuff. Um, and if Vermeil and Gold continues to be just like a kind of cringe pile, I might drop that too. And then Machigire, if the main character does not Stop being annoying. Uh, the redhead character, I mean, I don't know if he's the main character yet because it seems to focus on kind of everyone, but he seems to be the main focus. But if he does not get his shit together, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. Other than that, everything else seems to be really, really great. Uh, and I have to say, so far, my favorite of all of the uh, anime that I've seen this season, it's got to be Licorice Recoil. Like, it has to be. I don't think anything else can top it, to be completely honest. Now, Harem Labyrinth, or Harem in the Labyrinth in Another World, I like that one too, because it has a very, like, near and dear place in my heart. Um, but just the sheer, like, cuteness and, like, the action and the just amazing scenes and the great characters of Licorice Recoil definitely places at my top. Okay. And then after that, I mean, you can go down and just kind of give random numbers to stuff. I mean, let's see. If I had to organize them right now, it'd be Liquor Shriek Coil, Harem in the Labyrinth, and then third would be... <sighs> see, it gets hard after this point, because then it's hard to rank stuff. Um, I guess it would be... My Steps Mom Daughter's My Ex. That's good. And then Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting is pretty great. 
And then I would say number five would be when will Amiu make his move? Because that one's adorable as well. And then we have, let's see. Number six. I mean, I'm kind of hesitant to put like my Isekai life or Black Summoner on it because given Isekai life's like jumping around um, of how they just like are advancing the story pretty quickly, I'm hesitant to put it up there. And then also with Black Summoner's use of CG here, I'm hesitant to put it higher on the list as well. Uh, so going from, I guess we only have Call of the Night, Engage Kiss, and Uncle from Another World. At this point, I would say Uncle from Another World, Call of the Night, and then Engage Kiss for the ones that I'm definitely going to 100% finish watching. Um, if we just leave the Isekai off, like, the Isekai, they could definitely like, sprint up the rankings here if they, you know, don't speed through the story, if they don't abuse CG, all that kind of stuff. Um, so they could, like, fall anywhere in the top 10, you know? Um, well, I guess there's only eight that I've already gone through right now, so they <laughs> were definitely in the top 10 already. But, yeah. They could go up higher, definitely. Um, they could definitely beat out Engage Kiss or Call of the Night or Uncle from Another World. Um, even Amayu and Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. They could go past that uh, so far. But uh, the ones that I haven't mentioned are, of course, Primadol, Luminous Wishes, uh, Buchigiri, Vermilion Gold, and Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. Because Lucifer, I'm dropping. The other ones, I'm not sure if I'm dropping. I'm just kind of waiting to see if I, you know, get pulled into the story and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's the, that's the kind of vibe I'm getting from the shows right now. If I had to rank them currently, that's what I would do. Uh, so yeah, let me know what y'all think. You got any differences of opinion? What your top five of this season are or something, if you want to throw that out there. And any that you're really looking forward to, anything like that. Because uh, after this, I mean, we're not going to be talking about anime for a while unless I make a... These are the shows I dropped and why uh, show at the uh, middle or like five episodes in. So in a couple weeks, something like that, you know. But other than that, we got, what, like 10 more weeks before I will be doing the first like full review of one of them. And being like, yeah, so here's the end of the season. This is what I thought about it, you know. But anyway, that's all for now, everyone. Before I start rambling on about nonsense as you know i do but uh yeah thank you all for listening as always and until next time i'll catch you later so bye for now <laughs>